Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a couple of different tips, which I think you'll really, really enjoy. Um, I'm gonna be showing you how to upcycle something, use up scraps, you can use scraps of paper, scraps of fabric, um, and also create something really cool in the process. Now, this tray, I think was 75 cents at the, um, it's kind of like a thrift store. It's more like one of those kind of pickers type places. It's a really cool place to go, but it's local to us here in Hudson. And so all I'm gonna do is take this tray. You can repaint it if you wanted to, to have it a different color, but it happens to coordinate really well with this scrap of fabric I have, this Marauders matte fabric. So the piece of fabric is actually a little bit bigger than the tray, and I suggest you work with something a little bit bigger because I'll show you how to cut it down afterwards. And I say, you can use this same technique for paper scraps or tissue paper or wrapping paper, you know, something you want to preserve. Maybe from a wedding, you could take bits of the gift wrap or the greetings cards and do exactly the same technique as this. So really, really simple though. So I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and yes, I have the biggest pot of Mod Podge I think I've ever seen. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it all across the bottom. Now, you don't have to be very neat in the middle, but one thing I'm gonna suggest to you just to make our life easier later is to just be reasonably careful along the edge. So just take your paintbrush, run it along like this, and you'll get a pretty clean edge. And I'll do the same down here. And the reason we're gonna do that is because our fabric or paper is a little bit bigger than we need it to be, it gives us some wiggle room to center it up, but it's also then gonna allow us to get a nice crisp edge. And we're gonna add a really nice coating on top so it's a nice durable um, project. So again, I'm doing the same over here. I'm not gonna worry if I get you know a little bit out. And of course you could always take your nail in and get rid of it if you needed to. So I'm just gonna go all the way over. And you want a reasonable coating, but it doesn't have to be huge amounts either. So you can see here, I can just about see the white, but there's little areas where it's more clear. That's all okay. So I'm gonna do this side. And also you can see it's a nice quick project too. So you could make these as gifts, you could make them for an Etsy store, you know, make them custom and things. This is a really, really great project. So I'm gonna do the same across here and just add a line in. And you'll notice that when I do that line, I just kind of dab my brush down first and then I pull my line of Mod Podge out. The reason I do that is so I don't have any extra gloopy pieces on my brush. So, yeah. And if you miss a bit, that's okay because we're gonna put a coating over the top as well. But that is literally it for this stage. We're gonna take our fabric and we're gonna lay it inside of our um, tray. And you're gonna smooth it out have as few wrinkles as possible. So this was a scrap from something else that I made. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a nice press into the corners, making sure it's nice and straight. Just like that. And the corners are really important. So you can take the end of your paintbrush and really give those a press in there because we want nice, neat, tidy corners. Let's just do a little bit more in this corner. Pick up one part over there. And now we're gonna leave it to dry. So I'm gonna leave it mm, maybe an hour or two just to dry. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna show you how to finish this with a really beautiful topping and also how to get you know a really nice neat cut in here as well. So once your Mod Podge is dry, you'll look like this. You can see I've already started taking my edges off and I promised I would share those top tips of how I got these really nice clean cuts in here. So what you wanna do is take your rotary cutter and you can also do this with a craft knife. And all I do is I take it a little bit of an angle like this and I cut. So just go along the edge and you'll see that your fabric is just easily released and you get that nice clean edge too. Now when you get to the corners, you can see my rotary cutter doesn't go in. So what I've already done is I've taken my craft knife, I really like the tonic one, and I just go in the edge. And don't worry, that's the epoxy getting ready over there, just something like on the floor. So um, once you're done with this, you can add in your epoxy ready to go. I mean, I can't wait to see how this looks. So my glamorous assistant has already pre-mixed it for me. And you wanna make sure you keep stirring it um, and there will be bubbles in there, so don't worry about those. Now I'm gonna start just by pouring some of this cup in 
and then I'm going to give it back to her for a second just because you want to keep stirring you don't want any film or anything on there so I'll put one back so it does help if you have another person the other thing is bear in mind that when you put it down is it can get a little bit uh, sticky in places so always put down like an easy clean mat maybe a bit of press and seal just something to protect your surface or of course have a husband, a friend, a fellow crafter hold it for you. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just tipping it so it goes to all the edges, into the corners, um, but I don't want it to pull in any of those places. So you kind of have to move reasonably quickly as soon as it touches. And then we're gonna go back down here, just into this corner. And that's it. Now I have a few bubbles. So to get rid of those, you want a heat tool and the Ranger heated tool is one of the best ones because it has the lower heat setting on it. And then as soon as you heat those bubbles, don't stay in any spot too long. I'm going to just move, it's one bit of fabric I can see here that hasn't got the epoxy on. There we go. We'll go back. And so you're just going to heat each area. Don't stay there too long. Just keep going around. If you need to, you can move the epoxy with your fingers. I suggest gloved fingers are much better than your bare fingers, but it's fine, I'll take it off afterwards. And then again, we're gonna leave it to cool, um, or secure rather, for about 24 hours. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna show you a picture now on your screen so you don't have to wait 24 hours how it comes out. It'll be all glossy, shiny, the fabric will look great as well. So be sure um, to just leave it long enough to cure. And sometimes I have found with the epoxy, I've had to add um, a second thin coat over the top, but you'll be able to see that once you're done and you can make your decision. Now the epoxy that I use is just one that I get on Amazon. Um, I'll link that in the description below and just follow the instructions on the back of the box. Every one is slightly different, um, but they're super easy to use. I say I like the popsicle stick and the red cup or a disposable cup, really, really simple. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe, ring the bell, check out the whole epoxy playlist. We have tumblers and trays and all sorts of fun different things to share with you lots of ways to upcycle reuse use scraps all of those gorgeous things and also to use your alcohol inks with epoxy there's some really fun techniques there too so check out all of those don't forget to hit subscribe ring the bell and of course follow along for all of our creativation coverage and i will see you again tomorrow with something crafty whether that's a tip trick tutorial or maybe something else we'll find out then but in the meantime happy crafting and i'll see you tomorrow bye